So today I'm going infinite in standard again. You can cycle through your whole deck with infinite mana and I guess infinite damage with our unblockable creature. Hey everyone, Hex here, and today we're having fun by comboing again, this time with an infinite combo using loads of new cards and one from Crimson Vow. But before we get going, I wanna thank everyone for their support for this channel, and if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below to not miss out on future content, plus you'll be massively supporting the channel too. But onto this deck, and I think it's pretty straightforward to achieve this infinite damage combo. You just need to be mindful when you have enough mana to pull the trigger here. I'll try to explain it as simple as possible though. Now let's start out with a main card in the deck and our creature that is gonna swing for as much unblockable damage as you want. It's Patchwork Crawler. You may know this card already as it's been around quite a while, but it's a two drop one two that for three mana exiles a target creature card from your graveyard. You put a plus one plus one counter on it and it gains all the activated abilities of all creatures exiled with it. So ideally you wanna play this after all your other creatures have been discarded or died and then you get to combo it pretty quickly. Firstly, we need this card to produce infinite mana. And to do this, we're gonna use two new prototype cards and their activated abilities, which work perfectly in harmony together. We've got Cradle Clear Cutter, a three drop one three or six drop three six prototype creature that can tap for an amount of green mana equal to its power. We also have Depth Charge Colossus, it's a 6 drop 6-6 six, six, or a 9 cost 9-9 nine, nine prototype creature that doesn't untap during your untap step, but more importantly, for 3 mana, you can untap it. So if these creatures are both exiled with the patchwork, you can tap the crawler for 3 mana and then use that mana to untap it, creating an infinite loop here. So what would be great now is if you can increase the patchwork's power to net gain mana every time you loop the tap untap combo. This is achieved by exiling one more creature and I'm going to be using Hypnotic Grifter. To be honest, I've never heard of this card before, but it's a one drop one two that for three colorless mana connives. You can now use your excess mana to connive, add more counters and power to tap for more mana and whilst doing that also filter through your whole deck to find your other combo pieces. You essentially have lethal right now but be sure to have at least two blue mana here available, this is very important. So we're going to be looking for Surge Engine then utilize its activated ability. We will discard it when we find it by conniving, exile it with a patchwork which does use the blue mana and then activate its ability to make it unblockable for just one more blue mana. Once your creature is unblockable you will continue to connive until you find then cast Luxurious Libation for as much damage as you want to kill your opponent. Luxurious Libation is a X green instant that gives target creature plus X plus X until end of turn and creates a 1-1 one, one citizen token. So to get the three main combo pieces in the grave we can either use discard effects but honestly the best option here is just to play the creatures and block with them or let your opponents kill them. This gives us enough time before we combo off on about turn six. So interaction and discard wise we have the Modern Age which both discards and draws and Thirst for Discovery, which does the same. We're playing Silver Scrutiny for card draw, and if we do generate a lot of mana, we can literally just draw our whole deck, fading hopes for opponent's threats, and shore ups to protect the patchwork. I'm playing 24 lands, and that's the deck. This is very fun to play, and you will even win a lot just with the Surge Engines and Libations. It really isn't too hard to pull off the combo, as your creatures naturally find their way into the graveyard anyway, and unless they're exiled, it's safer for a combo deck to have the pieces in the graveyard than on the battlefield, as most normal combos need. So have a watch to see how it's done, and let me know if you have any combos using Patchwork Caller, as this card is super interesting, and I'm sure there are loads of ways to utilize it all right on the play here i mean this is a really nice hand so we will keep this one and uh yeah we'll just drop our tap land and uh, say go opponent with a forest oh there's a grifter which is nice as well but we will uh, cast the modern age here and uh discard the clear cutter Opponent one Gruel, it seems, and a Timberland Guide, okay. So that's a 2-2. We do a Surge Engine, okay. So we get to draw, then a discard. So it's whether we want to discard the Grifter or the Surge Engine. I'm just going to discard the Surge Engine here and uh, play Island. We did draw a Thirst for Discovery. So we'll just pass our turn and we will discard the Grifter if we need to. But we're under no real immediate pressure here. So our combo is assembling in our graveyard. Opponent doesn't realize that, or they may not realize that. And it's giant growth on the uh, Timberland guide, okay. They're gonna hit us for five. Not a problem at all. And yeah, we'll just cast our Thirst here. And we have a uh, Grifter, a Surge Engine, and the Modern Age. 
So we'll just get rid of the uh, surge engine and the grifter. We draw another land, okay. Uh, we do have a 2-3 on the battlefield now. As our modern age becomes a vector glider, we'll cast our other modern age. We're just drawing our way through the deck here and uh, we get to discard the grifter at last. So yeah, kind of like where we are right now. We have a little blocker on the board and we have the grifter in the graveyard as well. We just need to find a colossus and get that in the graveyard and then we should be good. In a dual thief for our opponent, so they're going to make a treasure. And yeah, they just pass their turn. So we will take our draw step and we find a grifter and then we draw a fading hope from our modern age. Well, we'll get rid of the other grifter. And yeah, we're just ramping our way into this. So just need the um Just need the Colossus in the graveyard, but our hand is pretty good. A couple of fading hopes to uh, keep us in the game and the shore up on the crawler. But the th we don't really want to spend a ca uh, cast a spell this turn if we can help it, because I want to start exiling from the graveyard. Opponent with Awaken the Woods for three, all right. So I'm not entirely sure what they're up to. Yeah, and they attack us for three. And the two two as well. Well, I mean, Yeah, just double checking the card there. We can definitely block with the glider. I'm not sure if that was a mistake, but we'll take the three damage. Maybe it was to stop us from double blocking, but I was never going to double block as a... Uh, we get to XL the clear cutter there, and there's our Colossus. All right, so we just need that in the graveyard, and uh, we should be golden. I think we'll just pass the turn. We have a little smart way to get that in the graveyard from where we are right now. We're going to be able to... Exile the Grifter from the graveyard and then connive the Colossus into the graveyard. So we may be able to win next turn now. We'll see where we're up to. Fade into Antiquity on one of our gliders. Well, that's fine by me. And a Reckless Stormseeker. All right, so they have tapped themselves out of mana. So I think we should be good here to uh, combo off here. We'll let them attack us. Okay, they're just attacking us with the uh, two... Three threes, not a problem. If they attacked us with the two one ones, clearly then we wouldn't need to uh, be exiling the surge engine as we wouldn't need our creature to become unblockable. But yeah, we get to uh, exile the grifter, then we can connive away our colossus here. I'm gonna shore up the crawler. We can even tap it here to exile another creature from a graveyard or connive again. But for some reason, <laughs> I didn't do that. Um, but it's not a problem at all, because uh, we're going to go off here. We're going to exile the Colossus from our graveyard. And uh, yeah, we can start tapping and untapping. And uh, we're net gaining mana here. So we're uh, netting two mana each time we do that. And uh, yeah, that will give us enough to excel the surge engine we have just enough of blue mana in our uh, mana base here which is going to enable us to make it unblockable but we're just going to keep doing this then we're going to keep conniving our way until we find our libation so yeah we now have an unblockable creature on the battlefield oh nice is us And we're going to start conniving now. <laughs> we find it straight away. All right, well, we find the libation straight away. So now we just need to uh, create enough mana to at least do 21 damage. And that's the combo in action. So not too bad, not too difficult to pull off. Just need to get all the pieces in the graveyard. You can discard them into the graveyard or you can allow the opponent to kill them. In this case, we just discarded them into the graveyard. And uh, yeah, attack the opponent for a 30-31 uh, creature here. All right, on the play here, hand looks, it looks all right. We have some card draw on turn three and uh, yeah, if we don't have a lot going on, we might even get a chance to cast the Depth Charge Colossus on turn six, opponent with a forest. But this uh, combo isn't actually too hard to achieve as a lot of our pieces just naturally find their way into the graveyard anyway as the game goes on. And blocking with them first 
is a good way to slow it down as well. Although the opponent is uh, getting pretty aggro with us with their mono green deck with the trainee and the bamboo grove archer. But we'll cast thirst here and uh, yeah, pretty nice hand. We'll just discard one of the lands. We could have just start discarded with our Colossus there, but we have another thirst to do that later if we need to. We'll just end our turn. So going to take a bit of damage here, but we have a fading hope. And it's a dual thief for our opponent. And attacking us for two as the archer has defender. And yeah, we get to uh, Thirst there, and this is a good time to discard the Clear Cutter and the Colossus. And we did draw our Crawler as well, so we're already in a pretty decent position. We just need another creature into the graveyard, preferably a Grifter, to increase the... what, so that we can exile it and increase the Crawler's power, so that we can net gain mana each time we loop through the combo. But with the Shore Ups available, at least we can protect our Crawler. And that also gives us an instant way of putting an extra plus one, plus one on it if we need to. Well, we'll just block here and connive. Oh, wait, what does that Jukai do? Okay, that gets me for not reading the card. It gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. All right, so conniving is going to be no good here. So we're going to have to just use our Libation to pump up our Crawler. This does put us shields down. Yeah. Don't really see the Jukai trainee. Should have uh, read that card, but... Oh, they had an instant in their hand anyway. All right, so we're going to lose our Crawler, but uh, not the end of the world. But we'll play our Modern Age. Get to draw and a discard. So we'll discard one by lands. And uh, yeah, hand uh, isn't particularly great at the minute, but we will just pass our turn. Still got the Fading Hope here to keep us in the game and there's a Toperi or Topri Stomper to find a forest. And the opponent attacks with their dual feeds. So we'll take six, go down to seven, and then we're we're just fading hope this uh, stomper back to their hand. And it's a grifter, so we get to draw and discard we will uh, discard an island and play the grifter here and yeah we can start conniving here to try and find out find our uh, combo pieces so we're not quite dead but uh we are just uh, literally a patchwork away from winning especially if this grifter dies that would mean all of our combo pieces are in the graveyard and yeah down comes the stomper again We will connive and another grifter so we can throw that to the graveyard. We can uh, block one of these jewel thieves here and uh, shore it up to kill it. So we go down to four and it's an island. So we will connive now to see if we can try and find something else. Oh, and there's our crawler, which is pretty perfect now. So we get to cast that and we have Shore Up available, so as long as this survives till next turn, pretty sure we can kind of combo off over the next couple of turns. So we eventually got there. We'll see if they can kill us though. It's a clear shot, our Grifter. Okay, well, that's not exactly what I think the opponent uh, should be trying to kill. But we shored it up anyway. We went a little bit uh, shields down, but we've got to take that risk at this point. And yeah, now we can start doing our thing. So we will exile the clear cutter from our graveyard. We'll play our land and uh, no attacks, say go. So yeah, these shore ups are super valuable. Potent has come prepared with a few instants to try and deal with some of our creatures and it's broken wings on our vector glider. Okay, that's fine by me. And fight rigging. All right, so they're they're a fight rigging deck after all of that. But I think we win next turn. So as long as we don't die and we keep our crawler available, opponent attacks with their stomper. Well, we will just uh, use this opportunity to exile our colossus. And yeah, just uh, use our 1-1 to block. 
one more what was it gained through the libation so our patchwork crawler can now start tapping and untapping um for mana and we have just enough there where we can actually use its activated ability from the cradle clear cutter to exile the grifter and now we can start tapping the uh the creature untapping it for the the colossus and yet we're gaining mana each time here so opponent nice is us and at this point we can exile the other crawler that puts another counter on our crawler so it speeds up our ramp and what we're going to just do here is keep looping this until we have loads of mana and then we can start uh, conniving to find our pieces as we do have a surge engine here we could just throw straight in the graveyard anyway so yeah just keep um doing this we'll exile the surge engine now and just make sure at this point you've always got a blue mana available which we we do here as we're quite late into the game here and we draw our luxurious libation so all we need to do now is make our patchwork crawler unblockable and we can do that by using the activated ability on the surge engine so there's a bit of tap in here but we're now going to create a load of mana and uh, we're going to use the excess green mana to uh, pump our crawler opponent can't block it and we have sure up even if they have an instant available so this is how the combo works we use the opponent um, killing our creatures to um, help with that what we also managed to discard our creatures Get them into the graveyard and yeah, we have a 26-27 unblockable crawler out of nowhere. Alright, on the play here, really nice hand as we have our crawler and our clear cutter. And uh, yeah, we are looking quite good. See what the opponent wants to play. Windscard Crack, so a Boros deck, and that is the perfect two drop for us. The Modern Age allows us to draw and discard, and we will discard this clear cutter as being in the graveyard is the perfect place for it. Opponent checking out our graveyard, uh, wondering what we're up to. Maybe they saw the islands and thought we were going to do something different, maybe with a Haughty Gin, but playing the Modern Age isn't normal in that deck. And uh, Eater of Virtue after the opponent played and attacked us with the Reinforced Ronin. So we'll discard the Surge Engine we just uh, drew. And uh, yeah, we're looking for a land here. Modern Age, okay, well, that is unfortunate. We'll just discard the uh, Libation. We definitely don't need that card at this exact moment. We are digging for lands. And if we do find lands, we can start drawing our way into our threats. And the opponent with our Iganjo Exemplar and attacking us with the Ronin, which is a 3-3. We do draw an island, which is pretty nice. Modern Age turns to a Vector Glider. And uh, we'll just discard one of the Patchwork Callers as we had three in our hand. But we'll play another one. And just hope this sticks around. If opponent has removal... They may prioritise wanting to kill our flyer, as it's the bigger creature right now. But we're just going to try and hang in there until we can start drawing some cards and then start exiling our graveyard. And the reinforced Ronin comes down again. And yeah, they're going to attack us. It's going to get a boost because it's attacking alone from the Exemplar. And it will be a 3-3. Don't see any point in necessarily fading hope the Ronin as... They're just going to recast it again, so we'll just take this damage. And it's Rabbit Battery, okay. Well, we'll pass the turn and we'll wait for some bigger threats to Fading Hope. But the Modern Age becomes another Vector Glider here. So we need a couple more components in our graveyard to um, go off. But we'll just... Uh, Hang tight here and see if we can start exiling our graveyard whilst we wait. We can always silver scrutiny here if we need to for two if we wanted to do that instead. We'll just see what goes on first before we make any decisions what we're going to do. Opponent attacks with the Ronin again. Comes a 3-3. Three, three. And this time I'm going to double block with the two flyers. And it's a Kami's Flare on our glider. Okay, so they've been holding that all along. 
Kind of glad they killed that and not our crawler. I'm just going to uh, let this go through like that. So I guess it's probably best we draw some cards here as uh, we're going to need to try and find some uh, answers for their aggression that they're sending our way. Okay, and it's a sacred fire on our patchwork there. So suddenly we've got no cards and we just draw two lands and then we draw a land with our uh, draw step. So really annoying turn for us there. I'm glad we did kill their Ronin as at least they're not going to be able to um, whack us with that next turn. And yeah, we'll just uh, hold open our Fading Hope or the Ottawara, or we will uh, Silver Scrutiny. So we'll just decide what we're going to do here. Opponent has a, another Ronin, and they're attacking us here for five damage. We will take that down to seven. And another Rabbit Battery. Maybe should have cast that first. And they're going to equip their Eater of Virtue. So yeah, surely they missed some damage that turn. Uh, Wolf. Fading hope this uh, rabbit battery is it may slow them down slightly. Oh, there's a death charge colossus on the top of our library here. So this is going to be one of those rare situations where we're actually going to be able to cast that card. So we will silver scrutiny here for two. We'll draw our colossus and another fading hope. Okay. And there's a the grifter. All right. So this game may turn around now. We'll play our Yavimaya's Coast. We'll drop our Death Charge Colossus. This, at the end of the day, is now just a 6 6. So, this doesn't untap during an untap step, but for a 3 mana, it does. So, it's not often you get to cast this card. If they want to spend some of their turn next turn killing this, again, I'm not too concerned with that. As long as we don't die ourselves. Opponent with Ryu, Storm's Edge. So, they're going to get extra attack steps. Reinforced Ronin, Rabbit Battery. All right, so this is a massive attack coming our way here. And they attack us with their team. Well, we'll block the Ronin as I'd rather that die. We go down to three life here and there's a Crawler off the top. So I think this is one of those situations where they don't have any cards in hand. They do have a Sacred Fire in the graveyard. We're just going to need to slam all our creatures down here. See what sticks and uh, take it from there. So I guess the... I guess their Sacred Fire can take care of one of our crawlers, but we do have the other one on the battlefield. They may target the Grifter, I'm not sure. So we just got to survive this turn and they're going to get two attacks if they um, load up on their Ryu here which is what I'm presuming they're going to do. I'm going to reconfigure their batteries onto their Ryu and attack us twice. But we can block. Okay, so they reconfigure onto their Exemplar. Okay, fair enough. So it's a 4-3. And they put the E2 of Virtue, okay, onto that. Alright, so that's a 6-3 coming our way. Okay, so I think in this case, we're going to use the Fading Hope here. We could block with our Colossus to uh, kill it, but I think we need to try and gain a little bit of time over the next couple of turns as we probably can't kill them next turn. So we'll Fading Hope that now, and then uh, we'll see what they want to follow up with as they do have another attack step. And they just go straight through, play an Iganjo, or play their Iganjo. Uh, equip the Ryu, and pass the turn. So we just draw an island. But this will give us an opportunity to spend this turn in exiling the Clear Cutter and the Surge Engine. And then as long as our, some of our creatures die, we can exile the other two um, in our next turn and uh, win the game. So. I kind of like where we are here. We'll uh, pass the turn and see what the opponent does. We're very close to winning this game. As opponent plays Tempered in a Solitude. And they reconfigure onto their Exemplar. Okay. 
Okay, so it's a 4-3. And they put their Eater of Virtue onto it as well. So they don't actually have enough money mana to cast the Sacred Fire from their graveyard. So this should be pretty nice for us. Well, we will use our Death Charge at Colossus to block the creature now. And yeah, we've gained enough time to hopefully win the game next turn. And they get another attack step. And they just attack with the Ryu only. Okay. They get to exile the top card of their library and uh, play that card this turn if they want to. And we'll just block with the Grifter here. And uh, we have just enough mana to uh, connive, which isn't going to do too much here. But it might put another creature into the graveyard, and it doesn't, so it dies. But we get to combo off now. His opponent just plays the Kamano, faces a Kakazan. And yeah, we should have enough here. So in our end step here, we will exile the Cradle Clear Cutter, and we will exile the Depth Charge Colossus, and that will set us up to uh, win next turn. So I may speed this footage up as what I'm going to be looking to do is just uh, keep looping the tap untap to net gain a load of mana, exiling uh, creatures, conniving my way to put more power onto my crawler to speed this up until we can exile the surge engine, make it unblockable and then cast this libation in my hand for a serious amount of damage. So right now we are tapping for 10 mana, we're untapping for 3 mana, so we're gaining 7 mana a turn. Now we are tapping for 14 mana, untapping for 3 mana, and yeah, we've got uh, over 30 green mana here, so we can cast our Luxurious Libation on our Crawler. And, uh, attack our opponent here for lethal, in this case, 39 damage. Right, on the play here. Okay, this hand I can get behind, so we will keep this, drop a land and say go. And opponent with a swamp, okay. Well, that's fine by me. I guess we will uh, just drop the modern age here. See what we draw. Sure, well that's going to be good for later, so we'll drop a land for the moment, as our hand is pretty stacked. Ghoulish procession for our opponent. So we draw another land. And yeah, we'll just discard that land as well. So we'll play the Surge Engine for the moment. Starting to realise that these creatures are uh, good on the battlefield, because they get killed by the opponent, so if we just discard the surge engine then um, we don't get any value from it at all but we can at least get a few attacks in with it right now and I guarantee you our opponent will want to start blocking or killing it so we will uh, attack with the surge engine though and play a patchwork crawler as we have two of them in our hand holding open shore up if we need it so yeah hit our opponent down to 17 so our board is pretty aggressive here for turn three. And it's beside you reaches skyward, so they're going to find a couple of forests, put them into their hand. So it looks like some kind of lands matter deck here. So we've got to expend loads of ram and some massive creatures, so we'll see what we can do with an unblockable surge engine. Well, first thing we can do is make it a 5-4 attack our opponent for 7 damage, so already put them down to 10. These surge engines are so aggressive if left unchecked. And yet we have a shore up available and the libation, so this is pretty nice for us here. The opponent with a goring warplow. Okay, they gain 2 life. 
That is the annoying thing about Gala Greeters in this particular situation. They're going to negate some of our damage here. And it's Master's Rebuke on our Surge Engine. Okay, so this is tricky whether I actually want to shore this up. I don't really want to leave a shield down too much over the next few turns. So unfortunately, we'll let that one go for the minute. And then we can start um, building up our Patchwork Crawler and holding open shore up instead. Opponent gets in for a uh, two damage. I mean... I didn't know they were going to attack their Gala Greeters, so slight change of uh, tactics there. Going to use our Shore Up to kill the Gala Greeters, which has got to be one of their better cards. And yeah, we can exile our Surge Engine from our graveyard, and suddenly we have a 2-3. Uh, a now it's a 2-3 that can't be blocked, and we can attack our opponent again. So I really hope they don't find a way to kill the Patchwork Crawler here. And they follow up with a Renan 7. Okay, so proper lands deck here, but Patchwork Crawler's going to be able to get through all of these monstrous creatures they have on the battlefield. And yeah, they attack us with a 1-1 uh, one, one and a 2-3. Well, we have a free, free block here with our Vector Glider. And it's a Cradle Clear Cutter for us. Well, that's a card we can cast. So we'll drop that onto the battlefield. And we have to attack the Renan 7 here with our Crawler, whilst we have the opportunity and uh, kill that. So I'm really glad they don't have the Gala Greeter still on the battlefield. And we're going to do nothing else on our turn, so we may as well cast the other Crawler. Okay, opponent is still on 10 life and they are attacking with everything. Well, I guess that is a massive 15 damage attack. We'll throw the clear cutter in front of one of their creatures and our uh, glider in front of the other. Actually, we'll put the other crawler, I think. Glider's going to be a nice way to uh, try and win the game. Opponent makes a 2-2, uh, two -two. it's Midnight Assassin, okay, so it's a flying 1-2 with Death Touch. Long Reach of Night is going to make us sack a creature unless we discard. Alright, so this is going to be a great way for us to uh, discard our Colossus here. So things are looking good, we have a, another Libation. Okay, well, I'm just going to exile a card from my graveyard whilst I can here. Although I guess this shows the opponent what we're up to. Um... I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference. They're going to surely attack us with both their 7-7s seven this turn. So we're going to have to discard one of these Libations. So yeah, I'm guessing just some massive attack. And it's the Averbrook Caretaker. Okay. So yeah, just a massive attack here. And I guess we're going to have to just block all, all round, to be honest. So opponent doesn't attack with both 7-7s. Seven Okay, I guess they're worried that they might die next turn. But surely this is good for us. We're actually going to be able to combo off next turn and win the game. I can't believe this is sort of happening here. I don't know why they didn't attack without a 7-7. But yeah, we can exile the Colossus now from our graveyard. And because we already have the Libation in our hand, we don't need to connive... We can just uh, create infinite mana here and then uh, just cast the Libation for a huge amount, seeing as this already has Unblockable. So yeah, slightly different way of uh, using the combo here. But I can't imagine the opponent necessarily thought they were going to die now. But it's going to take a little bit of extra time here as we don't have a, uh, a lot of counters on our creature, but we can speed it up by exiling the other patchwork from our graveyard. So we'll just do this a few times. Opponent's already down to 10, so... We can just uh, do this for... Let's make it 11-12 uh, and uh, attack our opponent for lethal. Pretty much out of nowhere. So thanks for watching, I really had a blast playing this deck today. 
I've played a lot of combo decks and this one really didn't feel too hard setting it up as it doesn't rely on creatures actually being on the battlefield. Blocking with your surge engines and clear cutters both slow down the game and enable the patchwork. All I'd say is to be careful with the amount of blue mana you have available because you need at least one to create an unblockable creature. But anyway, I really enjoyed this one and I'll speak to you again very soon.